Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus this morning. He is everlasting God. Hallelujah. We give God the praise this morning. Hallelujah. I serve a living God, oh, even the devil, no, said not you, oh. I serve a living God, oh, everybody, no, not you, the ring, no. I serve a living God, oh, even the devil, no. Said not true. I serve a living God, oh, everybody know. Now you the reno.
to the house of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy and pleasure forevermore if you are happy to be in Champions Temple this morning why don't you put your hands together for Jesus is that all you got to give that you are alive this morning come on somebody clap for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Champions Temple International, where we are the happiest people in all of the land. Oh yeah. And we have no apologies to say we are the happiest people in the land. Are you agreeing with me this morning? If you agree with me, why don't you say hallelujah? Quickly, we're going to call on our brother, brother Sayo. For our welcome remarks. God bless you, brother. Hallelujah! Are you excited? Not only are you are excited, but you are excited to see another uh, uh, anniversary weekend. Put those hands together for Jesus. Show life. God has given you another opportunity to celebrate Champions Day. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, do we have anyone worshiping with us for a very first time on a Sunday morning like this? If you are here, we want you to stand up, call your name, and who invited you to Champion Temple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a good news that everybody is part of this glory. Hallelujah. So we want to say on behalf of God, the leadership, we want to say you all are welcome to serve this morning. Hallelujah. Can you please stand up? Can you please stand up as we meet and greet? Amen. Amen. It's a good thing we have all champions in the house this morning. However, it's also there's a need for evangelism. That's a sign that we need evangelism. Amen. Every one of us, nobody is exempted. Every one of us, we need evangelism. You cannot have good things and you cannot invite other people to enjoy with you. So let us talk to people. Hopefully next Sunday, we can invite people to come and celebrate with us on our anniversary day. Amen. Fire in the upper room.
God bless you. God bless you. This, yeah, be praying for me with it. You start this temptation. For the next five minutes, we're going to call on the church secretary for announcement. For the next five minutes, we'll call the church secretary for announcement. Can we put our hands together for? Five minutes. Five minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are people still fellowshipping? Amen? We want to be grateful to God, amen? For everything, for part one of the anniversary celebration yesterday, amen? Um, let me, John, be sure to say thank you to everybody, the women department especially, for all of those who left their basic schedule Friday, yesterday at the park, and helping with things. We want to say thank you, amen? And we want to say thank you, the whole church. We want to say thank you to our bishop, Bishop Masako, amen? Please, that clap for this man, amen. <laughs> we say this every year, all the t-shirts, souvenirs, and things we'll be wearing, we don't pay him for preparing it. He just buy the material and use the time. You will not know how busy he usually say, I like to sleep in the morning, but Bishop be up like 2, 3 a.m. for the past two weeks, sending me things, then pictures, sending me stuff. You know, I'm like, says Juanita, thank you. <laughs> Amen. So uh, we are grateful. I mean, if we are paying somebody to do those things, it will be really expensive. And we have somebody, God bless us with. And we want to say again, thank you, Bishop, for everything. Also, to the leadership, we want to say thank you. It's not over yet, but just by yesterday, they said when the Christmas will be good, you can know from the eve. So yesterday, it was really great. I want to say thank you again to everybody, all those who left job to come to the park yesterday. Amen. And let's continue our celebration. Everybody was dancing yesterday. Imagine the man who just came from sick bed. What for the funny? He too was on the stage yesterday. Everybody was dancing. So let's continue that. This coming Wednesday, amen. The revival starts on Wednesday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., amen. And it will be here yeah, at the church. Three days revival, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, amen. Let's come and celebrate. We have wonderful and powerful men of God that will be coming for the revival and also celebrating with us for the anniversary, amen. And Saturday morning, we'll have the leadership training here at the church at 10 a.m., amen. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. will be the leadership training, hallelujah. And Saturday after the leadership training, then we'll go get glorious, amen. My favorite part of the anniversary, hallelujah. The banquet, amen. So 6 p.m. on Saturday, we're going to be meeting at the 
four points in hotel. Amen. And uh, the celebration start. The dress code is all elegant. The people say I like it well elegant. But it's elegant, just all like you go and meet Daniel Chung. Amen. But this one, we're going to meet the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. So please dress are calling it. This is a church event. We don't want people coming and looking anyhow. Please. We also, our character out there. Amen. So please, please dress according to the gospel of the church. Amen. So it's Saturday, 6 p.m. And one thing I want to stress on, two weeks ago, I sat with the, the manager at the hotel. He told me they cannot serve dinner after 9 p.m. So we have to be there. If you want to eat, that is between 8 and 9 o'clock. If you come anytime after 9 o'clock, that means you just come in to you know, celebrate and you're not eating, so don't blame us for anything. And uh, also, we are encouraging people from 6 p.m. to 7. It will be picture taken because we don't want to be distracted for the past years. People be, other people having activity in there, people out taking pictures and all of that. So we'll have one hour of picture taking, which is from 6 to 7. If you are not there, you can take picture in your, I mean, on your phone. We all know that hotel got a lot of nice, nice spots for pictures. But we will not do the rare carpet picture taking after 7 p.m. Amen? And Sunday, hallelujah. Sunday is the big one, the conclusion of everything. It will be the mega service here at the church starting at 1 p.m. And the dress code is, I mean, the dress code again is all African attire. Amen? Hallelujah. So the service starts at 1 p.m. And, uh, we're going to be having other churches that we invite here. Other people are coming from other state this week to celebrate with us. So let us please be on time for our own thing. Amen. And uh, so far, that's all the announcement I have for now. Any other announcement we'll hear from Bishop. Let's continue to worship. Amen. Church Secretary. I put our hands together for the anniversary committee. I thought the thing started off really well yesterday. Okay, I was very much Some people are jealous. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, this announcement go to the women department. Please, after service, I want us to have a very short meeting. Please, it's very urgent. Please. I'm begging you people. I'm not forcing anyone, but please. Please, 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 in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So we also want to use this time to remind the church that we are in. We are still uh, for the burial of uh, Brother Michael Marshall's son. We did see that all the members of the church will contribute something voluntarily. We didn't tax anybody. So we want to remind everybody it's very important that we are making those contributions. We want to thank all those who came out to the park yesterday. We missed, we're missing a lot of our church members there. You know, I look, I see Emilio, I didn't see our Grace, I didn't see Sale. I was thinking, like, what happened to the people? Well, understand that it was a work weekend. Yeah, so, so we'll lay you off the hook. But please, we want to see you in Eric. Can we? Can we can I get a commitment that you attend all the things? What God has packaged for us this anniversary is not something small. I believe that the word that's gonna be coming from this anniversary is gonna be very powerful. So if you are you are one of those who usually miss things, plan to make a change this 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 anniversary. Try to attend so that God can locate you and God can bless you. They, they, there are a lot of people that are coming from all over the place, people coming from Europe, people coming from New Jersey, Maryland, all over the place just to be in fellowship with us. If they are coming for our own anniversary, then we cannot be missing on our own anniversary. So I hope we take note about that and make sure that we are here and on time. So I, I, I want to make one slight adjustment to the, the thing for the, the, the thing. We will try, if we can come 30 minutes, we'll, the red carpet uh, the red carpet will be set up about 30 minutes before 6, right? So about 5.30. So absolutely at 7.00 we will close there will be no shooting taking photo after seven because we have to go in and we'll try to move so that the program is not too long on sunday we'll try to move some of the things and see if we can get it done
doing a banker, right? If we want to appreciate people, we just do the appreciation doing a banker. So Sunday, we don't have to come back and be doing all of those things on Sunday. So we will we'll last, last, we will make sure that we have the program, everything dropped. Make sure it's planned adequately so that the evening at the banquet is really, really uh, spent well. Praise the Lord. Then um, the baptismal people, I know Pastor Moses, can you just come on and just talk about the baptismal thing? Can we put our hands together for Pastor Praise God. So by God's grace, uh, we have five people that have indicated to be baptized, water baptized. So we're in the process of uh, um, learning and reminding ourselves on the, on the principle, on the, the sacrament of water baptism. So I think that we should present the people who are baptizing because this is the last Sunday before 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 the baptism. Okay. Okay. So um, we encourage people to show up on Saturday. We're going to be leaving here early in the morning at about 8 a.m. Uh, it's 30 minutes one way, 30 minutes one way. So that's one hour driving and uh, approximately one hour of baptism experience. And then we'll be back here for the leadership training. So we encourage as many people as possible, please, to come out there and be a source of encouragement to those who are getting baptized in Jesus' name. We're meeting tomorrow at, um, at uh, 6 p.m. If you are thinking about getting baptized, uh, you can come tomorrow. If you want to learn, it's not just about baptism. We are learning about found uh, foundational biblical principles, very deep, very good. So you can also come in to learn and to encourage the others. Amen. What Pastor Moses said is true. When we're, we're in a Bible study, we're listening to some of the questions and some of the things that People were asking, we were a little bit concerned that we need, really need to go over these foundational things to make sure that ever so I encourage everyone to please come to these classes if you are free. Uh, the, the water baptism, we want to be at the place 6 a.m. to do the water baptism. So that means that we will leave from here. We'll be here about 5 in the morning. We'll be here about 5 in the morning, 5, 5, 15, 5, 20, 5, 25. We'll leave from here. So if you are do, if you love sleeping and you're gonna be baptized, well, I, I don't know how you do because six o'clock we'll do the thing that we need to do. Six thirty on our way back, we need to come back here to get prepared for everything. So please, uh, we want to do the thing six a.m. in the morning. So by five thirty we'll be leaving. For, before five thirty we'll leave from here. So make sure that if you love sleeping that day, let's not sleep cover your eye. We'll be here. It's a church thing, so the church need to be there to be witnesses and to support the thing. So if you are free and you want to come, you can go along with that. Uh, the scholarship committee, uh, they they are they are planning the whole program two or three weeks from now. They want to finalize. This is the final program that you the scholarship committee they are holding. They want to do their last fundraiser thing. So I believe it's the tenth of September. It's in the program sheet. Let us all support them. It's a good thing for us as a church to support people that want to go to school in our midst. We should do everything we can so that. Our people are successful. Our people are successful will impact the church, right? So the last day they are raising the money so that we can sponsor people from that are in the church to go to school. And if you are here, you are going to school, college, and you have not applied to the scholarship committee. It's not they will not just take money and say, Oh, who, those who are in the church and get them money. No. You have you have to apply for the thing. Put an application in, they have an application form. They will vet your application form, determine whether you qualify to get it or not. If you qualify, then they will award the scholarship. They will issue the checks to you so that they can assist you to go to school. If you even go to school, think about going to school in this church. It will be a good thing. It will help you down the road, right? So that's that. And then the ushers are also moved their program too. I think they move it to the 24th. They're going to be having their... From, I think the usher wants to take on the project to... We've been having all kinds of problems with the toilets in this uh, place. So I would say this, right? For some reason, it's not necessarily the church because they have been happening even during the week. The way people are using the restrooms is causing the restroom to clog. Each, sometimes twice a week, we have, to, we have to send for people to come and unclog the restroom. Each time we send for one of these people to come and unclog the restroom, it's almost like $400. The last bill was $381. We can't be spending $381 every week because people are putting all kinds of things in the place there and causing the thing to clog. So it's just something that all of us need to be aware of. To the extent that we want to remove the codes from on the doors to lock, to completely remove the codes from the door and use keys. So maybe for now to next week, Sunday, 
if the course won't work on the door anymore, you will need a key to get into the place. So if you come, the usher will be controlling the keys. You go to the usher, we know who going in the bathroom. When you move in there, we'll find any problem, we'll call you back and say, that's not how they use the bathroom. Eh? <laughs> so the church is losing a lot of money just paying to call people, invite people to fix the thing. And we think that it's not a bad thing to put another restroom downstairs. So we are looking for the money. Once we have the money, we'll put another restroom downstairs for the church. So we're working on that. Yes, the, so the OSHA program, and if I, I, I remember anything, I think the thank everybody again who came out to the anniversary uh we brought the last uh souvenir items this morning we gave them the keychains is the last piece of the souvenir items we gave them to the secretary so if you if you are one of those who pay for your package and you did receive keychains in there just to the anniversary committee co collect your keychains if, in jesus mighty name amen thank you bishop and thank you mother Kausa, for the announcement I still believe, uh, let me just show this in real quick. Uh, Mario Kalusa, you, you and uh, the women department or other women were looking at the estimate for the curtains the last time. And I haven't gotten back to us yet. So please, I'm still waiting for the estimate so we can start up with that project. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's continue with the service. At this time, we're going to call on uh, Minister Virginia for our tithing offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Offering time. Blessing. Investment time. Blessing. Hallelujah. It's time for our tithe and offering. And I'm just going to read one of the familiar verses that we are already used to. And I'm just going to exhort us a little bit. We're not going to be preaching. We'll just listen to it. Hallelujah. I'm reading from Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 down to verse 12. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet he hath robbed me. But he say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, he are, he are cursed with a curse, for he hath robbed me, even this whole nation. Being ye all, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in thy house, and prove me now therewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the reviler from your sex, and you shall not, and, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed, for he shall be delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Amen. We have listened to that scripture. Can we stand on our feet as we package our tithe and offering? The Bible says in the book of Colossians, it says, whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. So as in connection to this Bible scripture we've just read, as you are giving your tithe on this morning, the tithe is a commandment, it's not an option. And the Lord has also instructed us to not to come into his house with open, empty-handed, but we should come into, into his heart with a heart of appreciation, with a token of appreciation, because he first of all gave his son Jesus Christ. And as we obey these commands, we pray that the blessings of the Lord will meet us according to his scriptures in Jesus' name. So in Champions Temple, we do have different ways that we give our tithes. You can go through the cash, the cash app, the cash app Dollar Champions International. You can text to the number on there. You can also go online for those that are watching online. www.championstemple.org. Hallelujah! As well as you can dance and come before the Lord with your tithe and offering. Amen. Let's lift up our tithe as we pray. Father, Lord, we want to thank you for another privilege again to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege, Lord, to obey your word. We thank you, faithful God. We pray, Lord, as we drop our tithes and offering, Lord, that you multiply the source in the name of Jesus. And that at the end, Lord, that your name alone will be praised in Jesus' name. Amen.
My God will do it. My God will do it. Fire. Consume me fire. You will never understand. We saw me.
for me. I can't buy it. Come on. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. See you jumping. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. Disappointment. The whole you did for me. I can't buy it. On the cheap end, the whole you did for me. I can't buy it. On the cheap end, the whole you did for me. I can't buy it. On the cheap end, the whole you did for me. I can't buy it. 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 I can't
ceremony again to do the mawa. So uh, you can expect the building. We cannot delay the dedication of the building anymore, right? So we'll dedicate the building this coming anniversary, and then uh, we'll have the stone. I just want to clarify that point. Amen. Amen. Quickly, we will continue with the service for testimony. We will take only two people today. Uh, however, no. Okay, I got Bishop and just one more person, one more person only. Uh, so, I'll take one more person for testimony. If not, we will just go ahead, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Hallelujah. It's not often that I, I, give, I don't give testimony all the time, but this one to me is a huge testimony. There won't be any other Sunday again before I can give this testimony. The two will happen in the middle of the week. So I want to give, you know, I was, as I was looking at Pastor Moses, I was thinking to myself, I said, George, you know, you're not very young. Then I was thinking you're not very old. You understand? So it's not like I'm way old or too young, right? But something big is happening in my life this week. August 31st will be making me 50 years old. <laughs> I, actually, I actually forgot my birthday, my freedom, one of those who reminded me of it. <laughs> it was kind of interesting. And so, but it's a big deal to, to live for half a century to be on the face of the earth. And I want to really give God the glory for keeping me, my life, my wife that has been there, the whole family. This church has been awesome. I receive a lot of love, a lot of support from all of you. I just want to be grateful to God today for causing me to see this half a half a century. You know, it's a big deal. <laughs> but bless God for it. In Jesus' mighty name. I thought you'll be clapping better than that. Amen. Bishop officially John Fasio. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is a good thing the Bible declares for the apostle overcame by the words of the testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Every time you testify, it edifies the church. So we want to bless God for Bishop. We want to bless God for your life and many good things that you will continue to do into your life. Amen. Scripture reading. Open your Bible, please. Matthew chapter 5. We commence reading from 13 to 16. Scripture reading, the game, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. While your Bibles are all open, on to Matthew chapter 5, from 13 to 16, let us please stand for the reading of the word of God as we call on our able minister, Minister Lee. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. If you dare say amen. You are the salt of the earth. But the salt, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it on a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives life, light to everyone in the house. Last verse, 16. In the same way, let your light so shine before others, that they may see your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. The reading of the word. Thank you. God bless you. At this time, uh, we will then turn on to the music department for inspiration. After which, the next verse you will be hearing here today will be no other but our own pastor, Jerry Dishu. Amen. Amen. Praise him. Can we just stand up for the next one, two, three minutes and just worship God before the men of God come up today? You are the king of Zion, Jew, of 
There are people who want to pray, but they cannot speak. God spare our life for a reason. Father, we thank you, to God. We give you praise. We thank you, O God, because you are Jehovah Shammah. We thank you, O God, for your presence in this place. We thank you, O God, Jehovah Shalom, for your peace. We thank you for everlasting peace in this ministry. We thank you, O God, for your peace in our life. Jehovah Chara, we thank you. We thank you, O God, for open doors in our life in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you, O God. We give you praise. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we honor you, we bless you, this time. We thank you for your word, O God. You don't speak, O God, you don't speak your word. We pray, O God, let your word come with transformation. As some people listen to your word, O God, let there be great transformation in the place in the name of Jesus. If you don't speak, O God, you don't speak your word. I come to you, O God. Have mercy upon my life. Father, we pray that you push out, O God, that will be well as slow. We thank you, O God. Download your word, O God. Let your word take root in your people's heart. We bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Give me some more food. Days of day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. In Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I don't know what you're thinking about, but I want to tell you that God is in control. Praise the Lord. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes the enemy will make you to feel that God is not on your side. But pass by to tell you that God will never fail you. Praise the Lord. Man can fail you, but God will never fail. Many of us, we have testimony about the goodness of God in our life. Praise the Lord. There are people who wanted to wake up this morning, but they couldn't wake up. They are dead. People are crying. We are not righteous. We are not perfect. But we are living by the grace of God. The Bible says by grace we are saved. To faith is not ourselves. It's not by works. Neither any man should boast. Praise the Lord. So this morning I want to encourage you. Just focus on Jesus. He is the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. I want you to please celebrate your bishop. Put your hand together for our honorable bishop. Praise the Lord. I want you to please celebrate all the pastors in the house. I want you to please clap for yourself in Jesus' name. I don't know you guys feeding what I'm feeding. That song, Spirit of Heaviness. But by the grace of God, it will go away in Jesus' mighty name. The reason I continue to tell you, don't worry. Because... The enemy like to suppress people. But the only thing we are serving are living God. Praise the Lord. God will never disappoint you. So I just want you to focus this morning in Jesus' mighty name. I want to take minutes to leave for reading that scripture. You read it very well in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, we have a unique topic. We been listening to other preachers. You listen to the bishop, you listen to Pastor Moses, the minister, and other people 
preaching about the same topic. And when I was meditating, I said, God, I want you to give me something different that the people will be able to apply to their life. Because all the preachers told them a lot of good things that were very helpful in Jesus' mighty name. This month is our month of making impact. It means we are Christian. We need to touch somebody's life. It means we are Christian. We need to make the difference in our community. We are Christian. We need to make the difference at our job. Praise the Lord. It means when Champion Temple members go to work, People need to know that somebody different is working over there. Am I speaking to somebody? Because we are not ordinary people. We belong to God. Praise the Lord. You listen to the definition already, but let me give you one. Impact is a to have strong effect on someone or something. Praise the Lord. There are few words that are associated with the word impact. For example, effect. If you impact something or someone, you affect the person's life. Praise the Lord. The next thing is influence. We are Christian. We have the ability to influence people by the power of God. Not by our own power, but by the power of God. Praise the Lord. The next word is art, work or change. If you impact somebody's life, there will be a change. The matter of fact, looking at impact on a general level, impact can be positive and it can also be what? Negative. Praise the Lord. But in the church, we are not talking about negative impartation. The people in the world, they impact people negatively. Don't get me wrong, sometimes we Christians, we make mistakes and we also impact people's life negatively. The way we advise people. The way we handle people's issues. When people have issues, the way you tell them, oh, your husband really giving you a hard time, right? Why you can't get divorcing? Negative impartation. I'm not begging for amen. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. Why are you wasting your time? If you are in my shoe, you know in this country, women have right. Praise the Lord. I will divorce that man. Put you on child support. Negative impartation. That church you're going to. People can recognize you. If you are in my shoe, I will just leave and go to a better church and they don't have any better church in the world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even though you are married, but you are men. You get you one soup over and over. Negative impartation. And I expect you to be happy. Praise the Lord. But what we're talking about, we are Christian. When we impart somebody's life, it should be a lasting impartation. If the person accepts Jesus as a law and personal savior, it means they are saved. I don't know how many people left we imparted last week or week before last in a godly manner. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The matter of fact, in the church, all the pastors have imparted people life one way or another. We your joy Impart a lot of people like Pastor Moses, the great apostle, Reverend Mother, praise the Lord. I shouldn't talk about myself. Let me talk about the other people. They are impart a lot of people like the minister, even the members. You have imparted a lot of people like there are testimony I have listened to about some of our members in our positive way. And I also listen to testimony. In a negative way that makes me want to cry. Praise the Lord. But what we are saying, we are Christian. We always need to do good. 
any decision or anything we want to do in the kingdom of God, we need to consult God and be directed by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. There are a lot of people in the Bible that impact on people's life. Like Joseph, Moses, Esther, Hezekiah, Mary, the, the disciple of Jesus, Dr. I will not hear as a minister, everyone really explain about <laughs> Dr. the other time. Praise the Lord. And Jesus Christ, Jesus came to die for us because he wanted our life to be what? Imparted. Praise the Lord. But let us go back to our text uh, so we can talk about a few things. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, praise the Lord. Lord, read 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost a flavor, a flavor wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing. Hmm. But to be cast out. And to be trampled on the foot of man. Praise the Lord. Salt is so important in our life. And the Bible compare us, we are Christian, with salt. Those of you that can cook, if you cook a pot of soup, and you forgot to put salt in that soup, that soup may not taste good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It can be any kind of soup. You want to cook pepper soup. Let me borrow from Pastor Moses. Pepper soup and fufu, right? When you get to Pastor Moses' food, if you cook the pepper soup with all salt, Jesus is Lord. It may not taste good. Like for him, maybe he said, I don't want to make the person to feed bad, bring the fufu and swallow it. But technically, I would tell you, say, you forgot about salt. Praise the Lord. Salt is so important. In the Old Testament, salt was used for many reasons. Praise the Lord. People, they use salt for different things. For example, they, their meat, when they want to keep the meat, the other time, remember that there were no s ball, freezer, and other stuff. They will make sure they put enough salt on our meat and keep it for some time and will not spoil. Praise the Lord. So also uh, represent holiness. Praise the Lord. So people in town past, they knew salt for many reasons. I got discovered last night while I was studying that even in the ancient empire of Ghana, oh, it's not Ghana, I mean, uh, the Roman Empire, they always used to give some of the people salt when, when they had a battle system, praise the Lord. And people were always paying in salt, even to, to let them know the word salary is derived from the word salt, praise the Lord. Can I get your amen? amen? The word salary, some of you are working for salary, are working for days, it derived from the word salt because people were paying with salt. Salt is so important in our life. But the big question is are you salty or are you certain? Praise the Lord. If you are a salt and you can't see any fool, then the salt is worthless. Let me say it like the Bible says. It. Praise the Lord. What kind of salt are you? Are you a salt that add flavor to soup? Or are you a salt that have no flavor? Praise the Lord. You are the salt. Of the earth. They have a song saying, I'm a salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. Praise the Lord. I hope uh, we hear that song from the person one of these days because I like it. Praise the Lord. That's a very powerful song. I will let them listen to it. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You are a salt, but then salt has characteristics. If we are not adding flavor, if we making things better, then we are not a pure salt. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And as my prayer that every one of us will carry that flavor of the sword. That when you appear somewhere, somebody will know that sword is here. I don't need to worry about flavor because the sword is here. Even Paul, he said our war should be what? Ceasing with sword. Oh God, praise the Lord. Yet in what many of us we just speak any kind of way with our conscience. I don't know how many of us our wars are ceasing with salt. When your wars ceasing with salt, good things will always come from your mouth. Can I get an amen? amen. When Pastor Dishu war is ceasing with salt. There's not a good war coming to news. I heard it from Liberia. They call it Sunday school language. I don't know what they call it. Sunday school. People that can cause. They say, oh, they more or less Sunday school language in Jesus' mighty name. People get bad words from that more because the war is not ceasing with salt. Praise the Lord. But every one of us, we are working progress. We can pray to God. Say, God, when I speak, let me speak grace. Praise the Lord. When I speak, let me speak blessing. I shouldn't speak curse or cursing. Praise the Lord. We as a sort or city are, what are we doing? Are we adding flavor to people's life? Or are we making people laugh better? That's a big question, right? Praise the Lord. Let me make use of that 20 minutes. Are we adding flavor to people like the matter of fact we preacher we reach to a point that if we are not careful God will deal with us during the day of judgment you know why because we are afraid of people's faces I came to America as well I learned that they never want to tell the pastor how to preach Praise the Lord. Uh, I was in your church and the girl walked to the pastor and said, Pastor, I beg you. Don't schedule Pastor Tishi to preach in the church. The pastor said, why? Because he can be talking to me. But the good news is, in fact, oh, there's a brother that here, he always, he said he left to listen to me preach. But he don't have the opportunity when I'm preaching. And me, he want to listen to the word of God. Praise the Lord. I yet to encourage every one of us. Make an impact. A greater impact. We need to impact people's life. Everlasting impact. In Jesus' mighty name. I know you God been doing good. I just yet to encourage you to do more. Praise the Lord. Don't stop doing good. The Bible contains uh, numerous references of salt. In many contexts, a news, some of the world news for salt have to do with purification, value, usefulness, durability. Praise the Lord. So we are salt and mean we have value. Praise the Lord. Since we are salt, the Bible says, you are the salt of the earth. We carry that flavor, so anywhere we go, we represent Christ. We are there to impart people life positively for them to know that we belong to God. I listen to the man of God he said, some people come to church because other people have bad behavior. They say, oh, but I can go to church too because we are the same. Thank you, man of God. That was so great. Praise the Lord. When somebody said, oh, they mean, are you a Christian too? They're good. You rather on the press team? You know what I mean? You need to stop praying. Especially, I don't know about other countries, but when Liberian men tell you, you are Christian too, it's not a good thing. 
Let me now, so my look at me, you pastor too. The way I let cry, I need to start crying. Praise the Lord. And me, I'm not doing anything good. So in me, some of us, we don't love for people to criticize or but criticism is also good. You just need to apply to your life to know what the person say if it's true or not. But some of us is quick to be uh, upset. When people are trying to help us, don't tell me that. You are not perfect. What do you know? Then the demon says, slap her. Then the other demon says, slap her. Slap her too. They all start fretting. Praise the Lord. The matter of fact, in the book of Proverbs, they say, anybody that, that refuse to accept coercion, the person is a fool. Now the church we're talking about. Praise the Lord. The people from the other church. But it's my prayer that when I allow the topic to just pass, we need to impact people's life in a positive way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every Christian must impact other people's life, whether they are saved or unsaved. Hmm. The other preaching, I just grabbed a few times. I know you don't like praising, so I will not call your name. Praise the Lord. I learned that there are people in the house of God, we pass up, we assume that they are saved, but they are not saved. That is so dangerous. Wow. It means we got work to do. Because I see the guy, he come for Bible study, prayer meeting, in fact, he's sleeping in the church. So I just conclude, this man is saved, but he is not saved. Oh God, that's so scary. So it means we need to go back to God. Yeah, God open our eyes. Praise the Lord. That was so important. I don't know about you, but when people preaching, I listen to the points. Now you have to listen to it. Take it in and apply it to my life. So, we pastor, we don't need to assume. Oh, the person too fearful. I went to a conference at a hotel called Golden Gate or whatever gate. They call for auto call. A man of God has been preaching for over 20 years. <laughs> he got master in theology. He woke up. I wanted to call him back. You guys were kind of strange. What's going on? You've been preaching? You accept Jesus Christ? I will tell you the truth that that man went to give his life to Christ. Praise the Lord. And those of us from Labrador will let to take little things to be big. Our part of the pastor and they will say, ah, who the, what type of preacher is that? But God in heaven was so happy. I'm telling you this that we got more work to do. We are Christians. Don't just look at somebody and assume. It's almost like when somebody dress and come to church you feel everything is good for them. But there are people that are going through their own issue. Even by you drawing that person close to you, you can impact the person's life. Praise the Lord. The power of impact is determined by the character of our life. The power of impact is determined by the character of our life. Church, if we don't have good character, we cannot impact people in a positive way. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God called us to be different. You can only make the difference when you are different. Oh, let me say that again. You will never make difference if you are not different. Only those that are different make the difference. I hope you understand that. How many of you, when you go to work, people want to talk about people, they say, hey, that woman here, we don't respect her. She's not part of us. But are you part of the people who can say, are you a Christian too? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen, if you are not different, you cannot make the difference. 
In Fargo, the owner where Champion Temple will make the difference unless we do something different. Praise the Lord. If you are not different, you cannot make the difference. It shouldn't be like, oh, every one of us, we are church goer. We can go anytime. Yes, it's good. But do you know Jesus Christ? Have you accepted him? Don't be shamed. Those of you that here, you have not accepted Jesus Christ. But because, like, your grandmother used to carry the church, so I would just go to church. You need to try and accept him. Praise the Lord. I know I'm guilty. I've been, <laughs> I suffer from assumption too. I see people faithful in the church. Oh, I know. Yeah, I accepted Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, church. That war is just continue to count. If you are not different, you cannot make the difference. Those of you that can play soccer, if you arrive on our feet, can people go in our shell to say, oh, John Bryan is here. This man is different. So our late gossip, our late thing we're talking, let us forget about it unless he leave. But if you somebody, when you arrive, the people talk, oh, he is here, you he will participate. Praise the Lord. It means you are now different. I hope you guys are getting something. Let me look at me like you not seen me before. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. The bishop got my back. God expects his children to have a different kind of life. Uh, Pastor Moses, can you read 2 Corinthians 6 17? Or you can put on the bow. Uh, the powerful media people, 2 Corinthians 6 17. So you see, uh, the impartation or to make impact, God expects us to be different from people in the world. We are not the sin. Somebody told me that we are the sin. I said, we are not the sin. Are you there, brother? Man, go ahead. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Separate yourself from them. I don't know say you came to Christ and people have changed your name. How many people can call you Holy Mary? You know the reason why they can call you Holy Mary? Because you separated yourself. Can I hear your amen? The reason why they can call you Holy John because you separated yourself. Praise the Lord. Let's see. Are you continuing to come closer to God? People don't need to preach to you about sin. You're going to look at sin the way God look at sin. Am I speaking to somebody? You don't need, you don't need somebody to come and tell you. Because you got a relationship with God. So you say, well, God hit the thing. So myself, I need to hit it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> We need to live a pure life and renew our mind. Only people, okay, I said this. Hey, okay, now, people, people that are different make different. We need to flower other people's lives around us for them to enjoy life that they, uh, life they are having enjoyed before. So we increase now. We have newness of life. There are people out there that need us to go and talk to them about God so they can experience that enjoyment. Even if we don't have money in our bank account, we stay smiling because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Am I speaking to somebody? I'm not telling you, say, if you find your faith, the joy of the Lord is not your strength. Now, what I'm saying, but I'm saying that sometimes you expect somebody to be sad because they're going through some situation, but they are still praising their God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, listen to the one. Sort doesn't change sort. Stop wasting time on people that are safe. Praise the Lord. Um, Lady Sort said, you are sort, I'm a sort. I can't change you. We had to go in the world. People that need Jesus. 
We need to talk to them. Praise the Lord. There are people that die every day. They need us. They need us. But you see, we stay focusing on people that are already saved. Or sought, yeah, they sought doesn't change or sort. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who are you imparting? Thank you, man of God. Who are you imparting? I don't know. How many people are we imparting? Can people tell people, say, oh, the woman. Yeah, she's a Christian. Oh, I love this woman. I'm going to serve the Lord because of her. I love this man. Sometimes this thing is sound different in our ear, but it's the true word of God. What life are we imparting? What are some of the behavior in us? We ourselves, we know it is not good. I listened to a girl, she said, but if Paul said, I had to in my flame, I said, I get torn. Why worry about it? No, you have to worry about it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The pain that Paul went through, <laughs> man said, I didn't even go through it yet. I want to encourage us. We'll close with the light. Oh, okay, I got something. Watch out for the pressure of the world and things that make all to be impure. So we are Christian. The world we live in, there's so much pressure. A lot of pressure from the world. If we not watch out for the pressure, church, we may, we may be in error. We live in error. And one of the things about Christian comparison is one thing that can be all astray. Be, the Bible says, let your conversation be with all covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When Pastor Jehu G. the shoe can afford 10 out of shoe, he better wear it and praise God. When another person wearing five hundred dollars shoe, the man of our me spend five hundred on shoe. Why are the people that are hungry they're looking for food? I can't give them the money. Why am I spend? I can't even spend two hundred on shoe. Praise the Lord, and I, I won't get it. There are people who don't have food to eat. So even when you buy your dress, somebody was walking me doing a no, not a man, doing a man something. Why I bought my clothes from Walmart? I said, like your business? They share, I can be wear one day for a main program. I should go to the mall and spend. Are like you giving me the money? Why up as a tissue? You know, why you bought your clothes, 35 I don't share from Walmart? If they made you first, go buy a share for me. Praise the Lord. The man of fire, your clothes shouldn't be dirty. Uh -huh. That one there, I think your bishop will get a problem with you. So now your clothes is clean. Oh, God bless you. You okay. Church, I want to encourage you. Do not, if you want to impart people's life, listen to the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God direct you. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, we are the light of the world. Praise the Lord. I'll read it quickly. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Praise the Lord. They said, can you light a light and put it on a bosom? I don't know how many of us are shining our light. Listen. When we shine our light to impact people in me, people need to see Christ in us. The light the Bible talking about is not your full light. For you to put it on say, no. You, you, you have to share that light. Let people to know that there is the spirit of God in you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> light is clear and pure. Light doesn't change. People should see in all the reflection of the Lord Jesus, our life should be very bright. Listen to this. See in believers' life, then our ability to shine our light. The reason why 
many of us, sometimes we find it difficult to shine our light. It's because of our sin. Praise the Lord. For example, while living in unforgiveness, I can't shine my light. Praise the Lord. Yes, your light will not shine. Uh, do you know, church, unforgiveness is a pain by itself, it's a work by itself? When you got issue with Pastor Dishu, you don't want to forgive him. For example, you go for your lay uh, party or something, enjoy yourself with your lay Christian drink in your hand, you know. But soon I appear, your whole content changed. You know why? Because you told me, you're so strong. You told me, man, I mean now, when you told me in your heart, you must be strong. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many of us, we don't have peace today because of our unforgiveness. Yeah. When you told me that Aaron in your heart, you must be a very strong person. See how the man look at Very strong. Praise the Lord. Church, I want to encourage you. The impartation we're talking about how to impact people is not by our own power, by the power of God. Praise the Lord. Our assignment we have is to always impact people like spiritually, physically. I listen to a pastor preaching and say I spend most of my money on people that are not part of my family than people in my family. That was so great. Praise the Lord. Some of us will have certain spirit. I wrote down. You sure don't worry, I'll soon be concluding, huh? I'm escaping some shit here. Praise the Lord. They call it, oh God, where's the thing I wrote for the people? I, my, me, I, me, and myself. Praise the Lord. Self center. Everything we need only for us. That the reason why when some people pray, God, please bless my husband, bless my children, bless my job. In Jesus' name, amen. What? So how about the other people now? God shouldn't bless them. Your one should take all the blessing. The question here is, are you sorted? Are you adding flavor to people's life? Salt is so important. I remember church, one time, I was cooking yellow soup. I forget to put salt. Forget to put salt. Yeah, I was just studying that soup. Yeah, I was hungry. I was in Africa and at that time I worked for a year. You know, I was living. We'll get something new. We're cooking and new. We call it Mary Cinco. You marry by your wife down there. <laughs> so I said it. You said it. It can't get sweet. Like a little. I said, what? Something is missing. But when I put a pinch of salt, oh my God. It was delicious. It was palatable. Praise the Lord. So, every one of you, God expecting you to make people life sweet. But if you're making people life better, then you need to meet Pastor Moses and Bishop. Praise the Lord. So, you can have some conversation. Chad, what is the aim of the message? It's not to condemn anybody. It's to encourage every one of us. We try our best. But God wants us to do more. If I have one more hour, I will come to tell you a lot of sweet things. But I want to tell you that God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We have been doing our best to stick to time. You know, Pastor Dishi, as you were ministering, I was thinking I was with somebody yesterday at the park. I had conversations with many people, and somebody was sharing one testimony. That testimony, they were telling me something. They were saying that they were looking at another person, and this person was pregnant. And they figured out that this was the third pregnancy that this person had. This person had never had a baby shower before, and this person had never been celebrated. So they were telling me now that they will use their own money to organize and play and pay for just so somebody else can have that baby shower. That's, this is what we call having impact on somebody else's life. There's need on us. When we look at other people, we can see that they need somebody to help them. 
when they look at other people, they can see that there are a lot of things going on in their lives. This is what God wants from us. This is the Bible say, you are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its taste, wherewith shall it be salted again? In fact, the Bible goes so far to say that it is good for nothing to be to be cast down and trampled upon by men. That means that if you are if you are living your life and you are not impacting anybody around you, you almost qualify for that statement. The Bible say you are good for nothing to be cast down and trampled upon. There are many ways we can impact people's lives. Maybe just a simple phone call to check on and say, how are you doing today? Maybe just uh, if you can cook in front of the person that, that, that they, they, they go through something, you can give them food. Or maybe you can, you got 10 pairs of shirts in your house, you can give them one something. Or if you, can, you see their lives, you can just encourage them if they are going through something. This is the responsibility that we have as a church. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the Bible says, let your light so shine that people may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the main question we can take away here is that the life you are living, is it causing people to glorify God? Or is it causing people to have questions whether God is, 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 is working for you? Praise the Lord. Some of us, the way we are living, people are even doubting if God is true. You listen to some people, all the complaints they have. That is, if you are serving God, I can answer Tina. Why are you having all these complaints? May God help us. This is our month to have impact. This is our month to touch the lives of other people. We can do this in so many ways. If you don't know what to do, ask God. Sometimes you'll be thinking something is too big. There's one day, Pastor Dishi, I was completely broke. I never had money. Somebody came and said, Bisha, oh, I won't get you $20. Yeah, I said, I, I, I got no money. I won't get you $20. I said, bring you $20. I said, shake I said, the Lord bless you. <laughs> Amen. The point I'm trying to make, you know, maybe that $20 will be, it will make impact in somebody's life. Maybe it's just helping them with gasoline. So may God, may the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see the needs around you. And may God empower you to respond to the needs around you. May God give you the ability and the grace to impact the lives of people positively. I always say this in this church. Anything God open your eyes to see that it's not working, God wants you to do something about it. Imagine if you see Bishop always wearing the same shoes. Yes, and maybe God will for you to have with new shoes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are the salt of the earth. May we not lose our saltiness in Jesus' mighty name. Just before we, yes, I want the music, but just before we pray, I felt I need to say one more thing concerning the anniversary. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank uh, some people. I won't call the name here. Last week, Sunday, I announced that we will be having international guests and guests coming from all over the country. We need members in the church to help us host some of those guests. 